Hey, everybody. Yeah, I'm Stephen Hood from Telepath. It's good to see you all. We are reimagining the personal computing experience. You know, when I was a kid, I remember seeing this video that Apple put together. It's called the Knowledge Navigator. Raise your hand if you remember it. Thank God. Okay, there's a few hands. That's good. Yeah, I'll see you at the AARP meeting later. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this actually kind of blew my mind. This was this futuristic vision of a computer that had an intelligent agent on it, and you just talked to it conversationally, and they had this like nutty professor out of Berkeley who it was helping navigate a bunch of professional and personal work tasks, manage his digital life, and by the way, navigate this global information network. This was like years before the web. So this, this thing blew my mind, and it stuck with me, and I remember thinking, this is clearly science fiction, right? It's, it's not real. But it seemed obvious to me that someday our computers were all just going to be like this, right? So I went on to get pretty obsessed with computers when I was younger and older. Um, I went on to have, I've had a whole career in, in technology. So I have co-founded three startups. I have uh, built and led projects with millions of users. And I have been lucky enough to play a role in the development of some core technologies like web search, the browser, and open source AI. But I never really forgot about that vision of a futuristic intelligent computer. I kept waiting for it to happen. I actually tried to steer my career in a direction so I could be a part of it when it arrived. But it just didn't happen. Instead, we got this. It pains me, right? But like the people in my life, they increasingly tell me that computers do not bring them joy, which is what they used to bring me. They bring them frustration and like a sense of obligation. There's a reason for this, right? Our lives have changed dramatically. We now depend on torrents of information to lead our lives. But the problem is our computers don't understand any of it. And of course, the technology has changed recently, right? We have LLMs that can understand quite a bit. So I figured, okay, now that's it. That was the missing link. I'm gonna get my knowledge navigator. Here we go, are we ready? Are we ready? Here it comes. No, we just took this 40-year-old interface and then we started plastering AI on top of it, right? Copilots, sidebars, computer use agents. Nothing really has changed yet, right? It's like we, instead of building a car, we like strapped a jetpack on a horse, right? It's not really addressing the core problem, is it? <laughs> right? So what is the core problem? I think we all know what the core problem is. We have spent decades building this stack and now we are trapped by it, right? We built this Jenga tower of complexity, a lot of it because we had to compensate for a computer that couldn't understand humans. But you know what happens to a Jenga tower when you kick out the bottom brick, right? The whole thing comes down. That is our core insight as a team. That brick's already gone. The tower's already falling. It's just most people can't see it because they're too invested in propping it up. The old era of computing is over, my friends. It is time to start building for the next one. And that should be exciting because it can be so much better. That is our mission at Telepath. We are building the software stack for a new kind of personal computing experience, one that understands you and that helps you make sense of your world. We call it a sense-making computer. And I want to bring, with you, bring you now with me into the TARDIS a short distance in the future. I'm going to show you what we think this looks like and how it's different from what you have today. Great. So I want you to imagine this is my sense-making computer. I've been away from it for a little bit today, running an errand or something, and I just want to kind of catch up. The contractor for your home renovation project is waiting on you to choose new bathroom tiles. You have a demo scheduled right now at Betaworks, but you probably knew that. There's a sale right now. That's great, that's great, but um, I need to know what Mark Zuckerberg's photo was doing on my screen right now. I need to know very badly. He was a guest at a conference where he spoke about a subject you're interested in, the personification of AI software. Zuckerberg said that the average person doesn't have enough friends and that in the future, AI will fill that gap for most Americans. Yeah, that's definitely relevant to my interests, and um, thanks, I hate it. Um, this reminds me of a book I read a few months ago, Ethan somebody, I forget the name, but it was about working collaboratively alongside AI, and I think he had a take on this. What was that book? Two months ago, you read Ethan Mollick's book, Co-Intelligence. That's right. Great book, great writer. What did he have to say on this subject? I forget. Mollick acknowledges that the personification of AI carries with it a host of valid risks and concerns. But at the same time, it's the most natural way to interact with today's AI systems. You made a note at that time, saying that you understood his perspective but were uncomfortable with the compromise. I remember that now, yeah. I think this is an important issue for Telepath and probably every company presenting tonight to know where they stand on. 
Uh, give me some different perspectives from industry. Maybe divide them by for versus against. OK, that's way too much. Let's cut it down to just people who've talked about this in the last month, let's say. Oh, look, John Borthwick, <laughs> such a wise man. <laughs> Always has such great things to say. So kind and generous. Well, what did he have to say? Your contact, John Borthwick, recently sent out a newsletter about this very topic. Borthwick says that designers should seek balance with AI, hmm. crafting interactions that feel intuitive without misleading users into believing that AIs can think or feel. I agree with that 100%. That's, that's good stuff. Hold on to that and also hold on to the Zuck interview. I might want to refer to them a little later. Great, one more thing. Have we talked about this yet on the telepath team? Like in our meetings, have we touched on it at all? In multiple meetings and in key company documents, you and the team have expressed a desire to build a system that is focused more on augmenting human abilities than automating them. That seems like a relevant perspective. It does, yeah, it gives me an idea. Please take a memo. I think telepath is generally opposed to the personification of AI systems because we want people to perceive that it's not doing the thinking for them, but that it's helping them to think better for themselves. Great. All right, I think I should talk about this publicly, like on behalf of the company. So let's pull all this together in one place and give me an outline that I can use later to write my own blog post for this. Okay, that's good. So remind me to look at this tomorrow. I don't kind of have time right now to write a blog post. Uh, and then maybe also send the outline to my teammates and see what they think. Done. So what you just saw is a vision of a computer that is not built on the Jenga tower. It's a completely different beast. There's stuff going on here that I think people in this room probably recognize from other contexts. I'm not going to explain all of it today, but I'm happy to talk to you afterwards until we're both nauseated about it. Um, but there's two things I want to point out right now that I think are particularly noteworthy about this computer. The first is personalization. Your computer today, it barely knows you exist, right? Like the only difference it knows between us probably is that we have different wallpaper. A sense-making computer is fundamentally different because it builds and maintains a, a, a understanding of you as a unique user. And then it uses that as input for every decision it makes. You may have also noticed a lack of trash can icons and menu bars, right? I hope you notice something else too. There are no applications in a sense-making computer. A computer today, it divides up your data, your intent, your functionality into all these little buckets called apps. And it's up to you to figure out which one is the right one to use for what. A sense-making computer breaks down those barriers, it has a unified data environment, and then it generates dynamically the interfaces that you need to accomplish a task when you need to do them. So unlike the Knowledge Navigator, this is not science fiction. Um, our team's only been assembled for a couple months, but we've already started building this. And it's already changing the way that we work on the team. Let me show you a sense of this here. So this is our sense-making kit. It's an internal uh, dev tool. It's, this is live technology you're seeing. So we'll, we'll hope the demo gods are with us. Uh, top left, you see it is loading up data about me, my Obsidian notes, my Granola notes, my browser history. On the right side, this is a bunch of parallel agents that are running constantly in the background, using this unstructured data to do sense-making about me. It is building what we call pre-compiled user maps, which are um, these documents that express an understanding of aspects of me, like the projects I work on, talks I'm interested in, people I know, my opinions, and so forth. So we can take that understanding of me now and apply it to new information when it comes in. I saw this thread yesterday on Hacker News. This is people talking about using open source models on their computers to run their own local coding agents. Pretty interesting. So if we put this into the system, we can see what sense it will make of it. It's going to fetch that article. Great. It's going to fire off a bunch of new parallel agents. Each one is using a different user map, a different aspect of me, to make sense of that, that thread. And here it's coming back. So uh, top right, it's figured out my projects. I didn't tell it my projects. It's not written down anywhere. It inferred it from my data. It's got Llama file on here, which is interesting. That's an open source project I uh, founded when I was at Mozilla. And uh, it's about local inference. It makes a lot of sense it would have come up in this conversation. It's figured out people I know who have either chimed in or are part of the conversation, like my friend Simon Wilson. Again, it doesn't have my contact list. It's figuring this out from my notes. But I think the best one is over here. So bear this in mind. This machine knows from my granola notes that the team's been building this demo for Demo Day. 
And it knows from my Obsidian notes that I have an interest in and background in local inference, on-device inference. And so it's using all that together to, to surface an insight from this discussion thread, which is that we could build a version of the demo that runs entirely on my laptop using open source models like GPT-OSS. That's pretty interesting because it's in line with our team's ethos and values. You know, we're all open source folks. So now imagine this happening all the time, automatically in the background, for every piece of data that comes into your computer. That is sense making. So where are we going? So we're building a new computing experience. You've got to start somewhere. So what we're doing is taking what you just saw and turning it into something we can put in people's hands as soon as possible. So it'll be a subset of our vision, like a, a small, a little uh, sense making computer that you can use today to solve a specific problem. And we've identified and validated that problem. We've talked to a bunch of uh, writers and researchers, investors, thought leaders. They all have this kind of same problem in common, which is uh, information overload. Their jobs depend on taking in a lot of information and making sense of it, forming them with their own opinions and, and perspectives, and then sharing them with an audience or clients or you know, their business. And there's just too much. I, I think probably everyone in this room feels that on a daily basis. There's just too much. You miss stuff, it falls through the, to the cracks. We think we can help these folks turn their information overload problem into an unfair advantage uh, by using sense-making technology applied to their information stream. Quick note about our team. I, I love these guys. Um, they're my friends. We've worked together before. We're thrilled to be working together again. I think that probably tells you all you need to know about de-risking the co-founder question. Um, Josh is the most brilliant engineer I've had the chance to work with in my career, and luckily this is the third company we'll have co-founded together. Josh built Claude Code Web two months ago, uh, and we've been using it for all our development work, so he's pretty great. Rupert is a very talented, and by the way, that's Josh right back there. And then Rupert, where are you? There's Rupert over there. So Rupert's a very talented uh, designer who's worked on AI interfaces at Adept and Google. We all work together at Mozilla and are thrilled to be working together again. He also uh, founded a company called Internet, which is another Betaworks company, uh, where he created generative UI technology that we're using. Uh, we're raising a pre-seed round. In addition to the Betaworks cohort, we're very, very proud to have the support of Mozilla Ventures and some great angels like Joshua Schachter, uh, Thomas Wolf, and Jonathan Glick. Hey, Jonathan. And in closing, you know, I feel, I feel like this is the thing that I've been building up for my entire career. Like, this is the moment, and I'm just really glad I'm alive for the technology to make these things possible, finally. And I think the whole team feels that way. If you share that excitement and that passion, we would love to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.